Hi there MotoGP fans, welcome to the channel you are here with The Architect and we are in our new season of MotoGP. Before we go straight into the race guys, I need to show you the livery. Look at this. Let me know in the comments guys what you think to this. We've got a bit of the uh, Ducati red in there. We've got a bit of black and green. Oh, I love it. It looks stunning. Let me know what you think. Let me know in the comments, guys. I love this. Can't wait for this season. In the last episode, we completed the championship for Moto2 and we didn't win it, but we come runner-up to Marini in second place. That's kind of where we left it, wasn't it? We completed that episode and we went straight into the customization. And, uh, and this is what we've done. Let me know what you think, guys. Honestly, I, th I absolutely love it. We started some research and development off. So we've got a few changes in the research and development this time around. We've got engine frame, aerodynamics and electronics to be concerned with. So we started off some of that work in the engine and the electronics. We've also got new staff management, technical staff management in a new chief engineer and a data analyst. And we also got a new personal manager, Johnny Thunder. What a name, honestly. Love that name, Johnny Thunder. <laughs> Here we are then in the championship standings. This is what we're kind of looking at to start with. Fresh race, we got Marquez in this championship. Alex Marquez, Vizioso, Petrucci, Rossi, Vignales, all the big names, Rins, Mia, um, and uh, Jack Miller's there. Cal Crutchlow, really looking forward to this, guys. So without delay, let's get down to the race, shall we? Let's get down to the race. Greetings to all our viewers from the peninsula of Qatar. The floodlights that light up the La Salle circuit are on, and any moment now, the MotoGP bikes will be revving their engines. We're looking forward to great weather for the race, but the riders' only worry might be the sand just off the racing line. We're moving to the starting grid where the cameras are showing us the riders concentrating before the start of the race. So we did our FP sessions, FP1, FP2 and FP3. Took us a while to get to grips with the bike. We also did our qualifying session and come first. So we come first in all of the sessions. There we are guys, look at us. Awesome. Let's load our setup. I'll share the setup with you quickly. Front preload zero, uh, rear preload five, rebound all the way up to ten, compression all the way down to zero, rebound on eight, compression three for the rear shock, spring hardness front one in the rear six, stern adjustment, brake all the way down to zero, and the trail all the way up to ten. The gear ratio, got a few issues getting the gear ratio right. I'm hoping it's going to be okay in the race. It's a strange bike, guys, honestly. Front brake, rear brake, 340, 220. ECU, power mat one, engine brake three, anti wheelie two, uh, traction control is also two. Let's check our consumption. 26 degrees on track. So I think that's going to warrant a soft front, which is what we're going to go for, and a medium rear. That's our choice. Rear tyre gets quite hot. Eight laps in the tank, we're going to put an eight. Okay, we're going out on a full tank then. I think we will need power map two. So let's get to track and let's start this race, guys. Our debut in MotoGP. There we go, there's the grid. We're first, Jack Miller second, Morbidelli third, Alex Rins in seventh, Valentino Rossi in eighth, Petrucci, he's got a soft medium on as well. A few of the guys have got a soft medium, so I think our tyre choice is okay. There we are, look, guys. I think that bike looks ridiculous. Okay, power map two to start with. Let's get a good start. Keep that front wheel down. And there's Miller, he's gone. He's overtook us straight away. 
out on the day to park the track. Morbidelli is there. Is that Morbidelli? Uh, yes, and Marquez is there as well. Look. So we lost a few places. There's Rossi. Just get. I've not raced actually with this bike yet. All I've done is to qualify in the uh, FP sessions. I'm not actually had a race with this bike. Maybe I should have done that actually before I set off on this adventure, just to get to grips with it. Ooh, I tell you what, that engine's got some poke. Because I'm trying to chase the pack, I think. Oh, listen to that bike. So we've got eight laps. Alex Rims is in front of us. Petrucci is now behind us. As we get to grips. Warm those tyres up, coming round for our first lap. Okay, let's see what happens down this straight. <laughs> Ducati power, as we can, can we stick it up the inside of? Didn't quite get it up the inside of rims there. So agile that bike, isn't it? That Suzuki. We will have to try that bike. It's nice to be racing with the boys though. With the big boys. Just overtook Rins, can, can we make that one stick? Oh, we've gone wide. We're not going to make that stick then. Let's see if we can take him back on the inside. Oh, we gave him a nudge. But we took him. I think we made it stick that time. So, so we're out to get more Bedelli now. Alex Rins is still behind us though. Can hear him. Power mode two, so we need to come out of that now into power mode one. Down the straight, power mode two. Let's get the Ducati power down the straight. That's going to give us the advantage. Out to power mode one again. Hard on the brakes. So initially, the problem I was having with this bike when I first got on it, it's so different to those Triumph engines, is A, the power was completely different, of course. It's a Desmo engine. I mean, listen to the damn thing. It's a monster. But it was the handling as well. You really couldn't get used to its handling. It was running wide and the front was so sensitive, I kept losing the front. So as I touched the brakes, the front was washing out. So it took a while to get a setup. Of course, the setup is very different to the setups that I was putting on the Moto 2 bike. So we're keeping with the pack here. Yeah, I've really had to get used to the feel of the bike. It's 
especially the front brake. That front end is quite loose on this bike. So Morbidelli in front then, let's try and get a grip on what's happening. So Morbidelli in front, we can see him, but who's leading the race? Do we know? Is it Marquez? It's going to be Marquez, isn't it? Ooh. Okay, Ducati power down the straight, power mode 2. We've got some white space behind us now, so Renz is a little bit behind. Managed to get it stopped there. So Marquez is third actually. So who's in front? Is it Miller? I think it is, you know. First gear corner that is. It took me a while to understand that. What it also took me a while to get used to is how slow this bike turns. I mean it's stable as hell, apart from that front end. Really twitchy front end, but in terms of the bike itself, it, it feels stable, it feels right and proper, you know. But it was turning like a truck, hence why there's no rate. We've reduced the rate right down, so the bike just turned a lot faster now. Now we've reduced that rate right down. So we're halfway through then, position five, that's not a bad start for the first race of the season. Quattuaro has just put in the fastest lap, Morbidelli in front of us, I need, I need to check what, uh, you know, uh, what the gap is actually on that. So I think for the first race we're keeping up with the guys, the big boys, you know, at the front. I mean, they aren't running away with it. I'm beginning to make a few mistakes now. I don't want to let Rins catch us up. But they are pulling a gap because I had some terrible lines there. Power mode 2 down this straight. So the front tyre is not getting any temperature in it, which is making the front a bit twitchy. Jack Miller's got the fastest lap. Ooh, front end's feeling a little bit wishy-washy. I'm struggling to close the gap, though. Power mode 2 down this straight, see if we can get more Bidelli. Two laps to go. Still position five, a big gap behind us. Marquez in third, Quattararo uh, second, and in first place we've got Miller. It's a Ducati at least. It's just not our Ducati. Are we closing on Morbidelli? So coming round for lap seven for the final lap coming round the long way power mode 2 then see if we can get round in power mode 2 for the entire lap I don't think we will it looks like we're going to end in position 5 which for our, our debut on the Ducati ain't bad I mean this is our rookie year just can't keep in touch with Morbidelli, he's always keeping that gap, same gap, it's one and a half seconds, although if I stop doing that, it might help. I 
with that part of the track, we are faster, aren't we? And we do pull them in. But it looks like Jack Miller is going to win this race for Ducati. Don't think we've done anything wrong. We could have been a bit cleaner. But on the whole, for our first race, I'm happy with this result. I'll take it. Jack Miller won then. Oh, a bit of a shake of the head there. Before we go to see the party at the podium, let's take a look at the MotoGP class final results. Now for our first race, I don't think that was bad. So Jack Miller come first, Fabio Quattararo come second, Mark Marquez come third with Morbidelli in fourth. Alex Rins on the Suzuki, he kept his place behind us. Danilo Petrucci, where did Rossi come? He come eighth. Okay. Uh, Crutchlow, where did he come? He probably fell off. No, he's there. So let's have a look at the Riders' Championship then. So Jack Miller, he starting off with the full 25 points and currently leader of the championship. We got 11 points, but Fabio Cotteraro 20 points, Marquez 16, Morbidelli 13. So we're currently fifth in the championship with 11 points, uh, trailing Miller by 14 points. So not a bad start for the first race of the season and we also achieved our race goal of being in the top 10. So moving on team championships, our Petronas Yamaha SRT team of the dynamic duo, Morbidelli and Quattararo. I mean, we're not going to do much in the team championships as we're the only rider in our team. But hey-ho. Constructors championship, obviously Ducati with Miller. So reputation then is going up. So we met our objective for third row, so I think we met all our objectives, didn't we? We did, yes. And we got our bonuses. So we've also got uh, in here now our Moto3 Junior team which ran this weekend as well. If you want to see some of that guys leave me a comment and let me know. I shall drop the odd video in to keep you posted on what's going on in the Junior team and I'll see if I can do a video for you guys. Research data, I think we've got everything there but the race uh, simulation we only managed to get three valid laps in because I fell off basically. Okay, so here we are then in the office. Let's have a quick scoot around what's going on in the office here. Personal manager, Johnny Thunder. Looks like we've got a new personal manager, a new candidate. Let's have a look. Uh, Nicholas Moore, he's an ace. His focus is on economic negotiations. But we're okay for now, so we don't need to do anything with that right now. Uh, one of the other things I did, guys, just while I was on the other side, is I uh, shown us some interest in the Pramac team. And, uh, and the Suzuki team for next season. Let's just have a look actually, what? Are we on a two season contract here? We are on a two season contract with a termination clause of 400,000. Okay, I was hoping to go to Suzuki maybe next season, but we might pay ourselves out of the contract. We'll see how we do. Okay, so research and development. Let's see now if we can start some research on the frame. So we can't start any yet, we just don't have enough requirements, so we can't do anything there. And we can't do anything in aerodynamics either, we just don't have the requirements yet, so we need to do some more development work. Uh, so in terms of development, we've got another six weeks yet for the engine development to be done, and the electronics, which is what I started in between uh, this video and the last video, guys. So we're just waiting for that to complete. Which kind of leaves us now to uh, go into the calendar and move on a few weeks and go to Austin. So let's just advance, advance again, advance again. So technical staff management, we've got a new candidate. I don't think we're going to get a better candidate than who we've got. Still he's 87 in the electronics but we're working on engine development at the moment that's where our strength is but at least we've got two people there for later when we can change these guys over and we'll probably work on either electronics or aer aerodynamics so we'll leave them at the moment but we won't change anything 
So then guys, I think that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode for our debut race in MotoGP. I think it went fairly well. Let me know in the comments what you thought, guys. Let me know in the comments also what you think of the bike and the livery and the colours. Let me know if you like it or don't like it. And um, I'll see you in the next episode, guys. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Welcome to the state of Texas. We're at the Circuit of the Americas where everything's ready to kick off for a new weekend of motorcycle racing. The tension is palpable. Mechanics and engineers are at work to sort out the final technical details before the start of this official session. The weather forecast for the session is perfect, so riders and teams will be able to concentrate exclusively on fine-tuning their performance.